For number eight, we are dealing with the t distribution. And you can use the table in the book that's also linked here to look up these values. But I'm going to show how we can do this all in Excel. So for part A, we're finding the t value such that the area in the right tail is 10% with 6 degrees of freedom. In Excel, we just use this formula, t dot inverse, and we would put in the parameters 10% and 6 for the degrees of freedom. And Excel will calculate the t value for you. Now, Excel always calculates the left tail, so there's 10% in the left tail, but by symmetry, this is the same t-value to have 10% in the right tail, you just need to make it positive instead of negative. So same with the next two, just make sure to change the negative to a positive when you insert your answer for the right tail. And for the last part, we're finding the critical value that corresponds to 99% confidence and assuming 25 degrees of freedom. So this means that both tails together only have 1% in them. So if we want to do both tails at the same time, we do t dot inverse with two tails. And here we do 1%. That's in both of the tails, 25 degrees of freedom. And Excel calculates the t value for you. For number nine, we have listed the lower and upper bounds of our confidence interval for our population mean. And the point estimate is always right in the very middle of our confidence interval. So we need to find the number in the middle between 17 and 27. We can do that by averaging those two values, add them together, divide by 2. 22 is right in the middle. So that's our point estimate. And the margin of error is just the distance between that point estimate and the upper and lower bound. So 22 is 5 away from 27. And similarly, 22 is also 5 away from 17. For number 11, we're trying to determine how much time people spend eating and drinking. And for our sample, we've calculated the mean and they calculate the standard deviation. For part A, just read the choices carefully and select the best one. For part B, we're relying on page 444 of the textbook where, it's, where it starts to talk about how to construct and interpret a confidence interval for a population mean. So page 444. For part B, you need to use the fact here that your sample size needs to be less than 5% of the population size. For part C, we're trying to determine and, and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the mean amount of time Americans age 15 or older spend eating and drinking. So going back to the textbook, to page 445, to find the lower bound and upper bound of our confidence interval, we're going to use this formula where it's centered around the sample mean and then we add the margin of error to get the upper bound subtract the margin of error to get the lower bound so jump into Excel here we need to find our t value for a 90 percent confidence interval and Excel will tell you that if you use this formula we want only 10 percent to be in the tail because we're 90 percent confident and our degrees of freedom is one less than our sample size, and we get our t value. And then the margin of error that we're going to add or subtract to get our confidence interval. We need the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Standard deviation was listed in the problem, and then the square root of the sample size. So multiply that by your t value, and you get this margin of error. So then for our upper and lower limits of our confidence interval, we just take the sample mean and add, and the sample mean and subtract, and you get your upper and lower limits. And then for part D, we really shouldn't use this interval and this level of confidence for anything other than people aged 15 or older, because that is the statistics we gathered. Our random sample was all people aged 15 or older, and so our results need to only apply to people aged 15 or older. For number 12, we have interviewed 83 SARS patients about the incubation period for the SARS virus. And for our sample, we found the mean and the standard deviation. And now we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. And so for 95% confidence, we need to find the T value associated with that in Excel. That means there'd be 5% in the tails. 
our degrees of freedom is one less than our sample. And so we get this for our t value. And then our formula to find the margin of error, we multiply that by the standard deviation divided by square root of the sample size. So we get this for our margin of error. So take our sample mean and add that. Take the sample mean and subtract that. And you'll get the upper and lower bounds of your confidence interval. And then interpret that interval for the second part.